So are you looking to train for a comp to get in the best shape of your life, to have those capped shoulders, the big booty, the dissected abs and chiseled midsection, pecs that are popping. Big boobs. Big boobs. <laughs> Please leave your abs inside the skin. Inside your body. Then this podcast is for you. We're going to be talking about training methods across the board, but specifically hypertrophy and getting in shape for a comp. This is a topic that I have a lot of, I don't know, rage towards. Why? Yes. Why rage? Why rage? Because there's so many fucking idiots <laughs> who talk about this topic. Oh. Wow. Okay, I was okay. to say it. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, wow. just talk about own. nonsense. What nonsense training. Tell, tell, tell us okay. the nonsense, nonsense. Right. Mark. Tell so, us the um, nonsense. lat pull down doesn't build your lats or your back. <laughs> Dead, deadlifts <laughs> don't build muscle. You know, you no, shouldn't no, no, squat because no, no, no. it thickens no, the midsection. No, deadlifts thicken the midsection. Yeah. They make you blocky. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. What, else, what else is there? You shouldn't train uh, Don't arms. squat. Uh, there was a bicep thing that I saw recently. Oh, barbell bicep curls. You don't do barbell bicep curls. Dumbbell rows. Wow. Just, the list goes on. So the list goes on and on. And, and squ squat, there's, there's one about squats too. Everything There's something, you, like if you if you search enough, you could find a nuance about every exercise and why it's bad. Just why pick an exercise you don't like. And you can find out why. You'll find an excuse. Absolutely. They're all excuses. Yeah. Correct. So people have a weakness and they turn that weakness into a fact. And then they walk around that fact like it's conviction. And then they present it as a theory because they have a weakness. They're weak. They don't like deadlifting. They don't like squatting because it's fucking hard. It's hard to take a set of deadlifts to failure or that rep before. It's hard to take a set of squats to failure and go heavy week after week. And then they say, oh, well, you know... It's not that good of an hypertrophy exercise anyway. You know, leave that to the power lifters. It's like, come on, man. I heard that from Amy. That was, <laughs> how was your squat, Amy? Her comment. Wow. <laughs> That's just leg press. It's just easy. Well, you want to leg press because it's easier, right? That's well, why yeah, you want Because you can, you can like that, the meme. Outrage. Yeah. Well, Outrage. You, there's, there's the meme. It's just like, well, because you can put 400 kilos on a leg press, right? And make it look good. But you can't put 400 kilos on the squat. squat yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay. Look, one is a bit well, more Tom, neurally taxing. Tom can. Or Ed Gone can. And, Ed Ronnie, and, and Ronnie Coleman. There's always an exception, all right? Yeah, there's always exceptions. And look, and look, 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 look. look. And, and, fund and fundamentally, I mean, if you look at their size of their legs. Well, yeah. Massive. I mean, it's, it's like you say, look at, look at the biggest deadlifters in the world and have a look at their back. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. They have now, muscles in places yeah. most people don't have places. They have backs on backs. They have backs on backs. But, you know, and, and, and you look, look, look. some lats keyboard lats. warrior saying, don't deadlift for hypertrophy. Oh, man, I got, I got that. I put up my deadlift video today and when I did 194 and I, one, I got a comment of, um, I was an idiot because I wore straps. Um, <laughs> and then two, I was like, man, it's, 190, it's like 190 kilos. Like, for reps. Yeah, yeah, for reps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's fine. And then two, grip the other strength. one was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. More grip strength. <laughs> then the other one was like, um, the comment was, I'm a clown because I didn't have a belt on. And oh, right. I was deadlifting in socks. And I was like, you're right. I shouldn't have been in socks. I should have been barefoot. And enhances proprioception. And I'm like, what? what? I'm like, that's okay. If you need a belt, right, to band-aid your shitty brace and you, you, the fact that you can't brace, go ahead. I don't need that. Not yet. Yeah. But anyways, that's ranting. Well, I, I use a belt. I like a belt to just stiffen up that brace and really get into that position. Well, you, to be fair, you have told me to use one. And I just, too yeah, lazy. well, it's just, I find I can get into a better position with a belt. But the point is, we deadlift. The point is we squat. And I know I've personally found, I used to compete in strongman. I, I, I did a lot of strongman training um, back, well, it was like 10 years ago. And I found that the muscular development, particularly in my rectus spinae, just really like the back thickness and fullness from that training, there's nothing quite like it in terms of bodybuilding, traditional bodybuilding methods that you're going to get other than lifting heavy ass weight. Because I mean, if you think of it like this, right? People would say, an iron cross, you know, what an iron cross is in gymnastics, right? That's not a good bicep exercise. Why would you do that for hypertrophy? Well, the thing is when a gymnast, that, I mean, number one, the best bicep award goes to gymnasts, not bodybuilders. If you've seen biceps peak of there and they don't do any direct arm work. Have you they seen do my bicep? Straight arm work. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be a gymnast, right? Exactly my point. You have amazing arms. But the point is, is because the bicep functions as to resisting load so the elbow cannot snap, right? The bicep has to get stronger, that peak. So there are, there are, there are elements. I'm not saying don't do a bicep curl or bicep curls are bad. But what I am saying is that there's a part of training when we look at hypertrophy or wanting the body to to develop muscle, we need to look at it as structure first. And then if we want structure over that structure, we need to put m muscle over that structure. But there are movements that allow maximal overload 
or loading on joints that you wouldn't normally get from a normal traditional, uh, say for example, a leg press versus a squat. You're gonna have a lot more torque and load through the whole body in general on a squat through all the joints and you're going to get muscle muscle development in places where you're not you're not going to get on a leg press because yeah. the range is shorter so i guess the point training in th training things and there is now studies coming out showing that end range training or training the, the body at that end range has a great application to hypertrophy and much more than people previously thought because they thought well you we just have to train overload it's all about load and stimulus but it's not when you train end range and you train proximal failure you get even more development. But obviously training at end range and proximal failure, you don't want to be training end range with proximal failure because when you're at end range, you have a high degree of injury. So you, yeah. need to, you need to then decipher, and this is where I think people go wrong, is they can't decipher, okay, this is end range and we need to be careful of when we go to proximal failure at end range versus this is mid range. And at mid range, we can absolutely go to proximal failure. And then there's the other element of movements that have high demand on neural activity which just take longer to recover. So for example, a deadlift. Yes, you're not gonna take deadlift to proximal failure or to that you know, absolute failure because it's gonna be breaking down. You're gonna use, I know this is a big topic, but I got a lot of rants, a lot of steam. No, no, well, I was just gonna say that like, as a like, disclaimer too, and that's where it comes down to exercise selection during comp prep, and it, which touches back on our other nutrition video, where we go, okay, your exercise selection should also mirror where your nutrition at, at the same time like you're in the back end of comp prep and you know you, you you your calories are low and you're getting really lean picking those exercises like a deadlift or a squat that are going to be a lot more neurally taxing and going to take a lot longer to recover when you haven't got enough fuel from food coming in to help and aid that recovery yeah they're not going to be the greatest exercise to pick but at the start when you're full of food and you're trying to get strong and you're trying to put on a bit more size like get those deadlifts in there are you saying that diet and nutrition need to be thought wow. of as the same what wow. no what? no 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 sorry sorry what i meant to say is hang on let me just go print off the same thing that i did for the last four competitors and i'll give it to you there just make go. sure you take the name off i don't even change it on the laptop just yeah. white out yeah. um but but then that's that's where like, like exercise selection like deadlifts are bad it's like well, they're only going to be as bad as you can't recover from. And it's just like any exercise at the same time. I think when it comes down to like how you train as well, I think your first workout that you do at the start should not be the exact same workout that you do at the end. And that's where it does come down to um, as you go through comp, your training's going to change just like your nutrition. Everything changes. It's not you start at one point and you end at the same point. It's going to be different. You went on this journey. Oh, yes. Do you want to talk about that? I have. Actually, funny story. When I worked, when I first walked in this door, I got under a bar and Tyrone, my coach, says, all right, this guy, this guy over here, oh, let's, let's warm up at 20 kilos. And I went, um, <laughs> warm up, warm up. Uh, no, this is going to be working set. He's like, as if, come on, just get under it. This is up. after I saw her press 15 kilo dumbbells yes. on a flat bench the week before. I'm like, oh. Be a she can, she can press 30. She can squat 30, right? That's what, that's what made you want to train her. It's like, oh, it's strong. Strong. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, yeah but gym, and, uh, gymnasts aren't good with their legs because they no. used to rebound. They don't build no. the strength the same. No. Bicep's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, squat's not so. Um, yeah, so I walked in and 20 kilo bar on my back and I got to about five reps and almost collapsed under the bar. So, yeah, okay, that's not a warm up. And like, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like going through where I was when I walked in that door, 20 kilo squat was like hell for me. And then now looking at how we have programmed our training throughout the time, like now I'm able to squat, might not be my strongest lift, but 40 kilos is, is double from when I walked in here. So um, for me, like... How many reps? Oh, way more than five. I think about, I think about, I think about 12 <laughs> about now. 12, 12 I mean, reps yeah. now. In a, in a, so in a, a tricep. It's like squat more yeah. than 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. 40 in a tricep with pack squat. If you had actually a strength phase, you'd probably yes. have like 60, 70 maybe. There'd be a little bit more on there. But, yeah. and hey, well, the point is now the 20 kilos. Which is what we've also done. Ball. We have, we've been through some strength phases along the way. Like not only, well, I mean, more after your last comp prep is where, you know, we've, we've really focused on, you know, we've done some strength phases through your squats and your deadlifts and stuff like that. Um, oh, absolutely. Like it changed um, from the day that so said the day that I started is not the same workout that I'm doing now. Like a year later, one, you'd hope you're stronger and two, you'd hope you'd progressed as well. Like it's, it's not going to be the same workout day in, day out. Yeah, you're going to do the same, you know, same movement patterns, very similar um, programming, but the idea is to progress. It's not to stay where you are. You want to look better, got to lift stronger, build more muscle, 
um, there's it's always going to change. It's always changing. And uh, I think exercise selection. So for you, you know, you're you're not. I don't because your levers. You've got a long torso, long legs. I don't think you'll ever really enjoy squats. Sorry. The way someone still, like still say, hate still hate a, a Jack or a Matty Crooks would just they've just I've got pretty like, short legs. Yeah, I just don't you, like you're it. a good squatter. Yeah, I just don't like it. Yeah, I like deadlifting, but I don't like squatting. Yeah, whereas you and I get that front squat position where our abs great, have to engage. Great. Actually, front squats were good the other day. Just yeah. just FYI, I was just, it's on YouTube and the tsunami squats. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're really good. Um, but what we're gonna like that, and that's what we're saying. You know, with with nutrition, with sorry, nutrition, with training is. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have the same movement patterns, and yeah, you, you're looking for that constant progress, progressive overload, and you want to train the proximal failure. But you need to exercise selection is gonna be important from a mechanical, biomechanical point of view because you need to look at how you know, you know squats are never gonna be Amy's best best lift, right? But at the same time, we need to look and go, okay, is it applicable now? Yeah, great work. We're in an off season, we can squat, but as we get to the deep, you know, deep into comp prep, I'll probably pull it out. And I'll probably put it on one of the hack squat just so it has to, doesn't have to think about stabilizing mm. and doesn't have to think about, you know, just, and it's not as, as neurally taxing. But the um, squat also for someone like me and Amy, the squat, because our, for me, it's my range of motion for you, it's your levers, because we can get so much out and range of motion through a squat, we can really recruit a lot of muscle uh, in that and create a lot of damage in a good way that can, can definitely help hypertrophy. Especially if you get us up on a, on a board or that front squat position where we can load quite. And might I add that 20 kilo squat I did when I walked in, I was sore for about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was five reps, but it killed me. So yeah, it was, um, it was a shock. But I think also when it does come down to competing is too, like uh, what are the judges looking for as well? Um, when you compete, they're looking for that symmetry. They're looking for that even split um, upper to lower body, small waist. And everyone that walks in the door is going to have a different body shape a different a level of muscle mass. So really catering your program for how someone looks is so, so important. Cause when you get on stage, they want they want symmetry. They want everything to be even, um, looking good, popping. And if someone comes in and they've been squatting their whole life and they've got great legs and then they get on stage and they've got no upper body, well, what's the point in that? Well, that's what you need to look at and you need to pick out the weak spots. You know, as soon as someone walks in, first thing you need to do is, you know, you need to do that what one if they're competing one it's a structural assessment because that's you know i don't i, I still don't understand how you don't program without a structural assessment anyways mm-hmm. um don't get me started on that topic <laughs> don't get me started on that and then, topic and then and then two you know you need to pick out and go well what are your weak points in for what you want to compete you know we need to look you know for females we need to look for that x frame you know whether it be bikini fitness figure yeah you know, and you know guys who want to look for that upside down sort of torito um hide their legs yeah, well, and it's physique, then, you know, the, the legs don't matter too much, but, you know, you still need to train them. But at the same time, that's where you need to pick out both. You need to then program and go, okay, structurally, this is what we need, which is then going to enable you to look better at the same time. You're going to put more mass, mass because you're not going to have be wasting time overcompensating and not hitting what you want to hit. And then we need to pick on the weak points and go, okay, we can do a little bit extra. We'll, you know, we'll sprinkle that through and go, okay, you need a bit more delts, right? So we can sprinkle some more lateral raises in throughout the week. Absolutely. On top of on little, top of your structural little, little sprinkle. I like, pro- I like a big dumb. sprinkle. Pro- protein, synthesis, <laughs> protein synthesis is rate limiting, which basically means that if you want to prioritize a body part, you do need to prioritize a body part. So I know for me, for example, when I wanted to really focus on arm gains and when my arms were probably at their biggest, I was training arms three times a week and less legs, less of everything else to prioritize protein synthesis for my arms. Does that so, sound for me, Amy? <laughs> was that? If, you're, if you're going in twice a week, legs and training legs and destroying your body and then expecting you're gonna do this massive and amazing and your body's gonna be able to recover because it's not just about how hard you train, it is about how hard you train, but it's also about how well you can recover from that hard training. And this is where sometimes you need more rest because protein is rate limiting on nutrition, hormones, genetics, all those other things. I don't think we all had the myostatin uh, gene. Yeah, well, well, but, but you got to remember, like you only, rec- you know, that's where you're going to grow as well when you recover. Hundred yeah, percent. You're not recovering, then you're not going to. You know, yeah, if you haven't got enough, you know, energy and calories coming in, then you're not going to grow. If you're not recover, if you're not sleeping and recovering properly, then you're not going to grow. Then you know, you just pretty much can be stagnant. And any trading program is probably not going to be great anyways. I think that's the biggest thing that I see as well. Like I have two girls that are about to step on stage in three weeks, and. Again, they walk through the door and both of them were like hip thrusting, for example, like over a hundred kilos. 
and they were squatting body weight and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then I went to upper body and they were pressing five kilos <laughs> and I went, well, you don't need to do legs. We need to pull back some of your volume and we need to focus on their weak spots, which was their upper body. So I think when people walk through the door, they just think oh, I'm going to get this like, you know, one size fits all approach. And it's like, well, that girl who's squatting a hundred kilos and pressing five kilos, like if I keep pushing her legs, man, she's going to be a great wellness competitor. Like she's not going to be a bikini girl. It's just, it doesn't suit the criteria. Too bottom heavy, not enough top I to think, balance it out. I seem to get the opposite because you're the second, you're the second female okay, competitor well, I've had where it's the opposite. Upper. Amazing upper well, and Lord Paula. I mean, I look, look at Ree who was uh, trained for figure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we went through like we went through COVID and everything and all the lockdowns, but um, we spent a lot of time just doing legs, a lot of time. Yeah, levers as well, not frame. Yeah, yeah, squatting. levers yeah, like. Tall. Oh man, I remember like yeah, we did we did a lot of legs and we did a lot of structural work, um, and that's where it was important, well, because um, you know, from, from a structural perspective, she didn't move that well, um, you know, in a lower body as well. So it was how can we get her moving better? It wasn't perfect, and it was never perfect in the end. But how, I think we're gonna get. I got a front squatting in the end. Um, yeah, because that brace always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really Without cool. everything yeah. Fall, you know, falling like falling down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Um, like but, her, but her legs grew, and it, then it, but then it enabled us to, you know, at the start where she would get so sore for from one leg day, I, we ended up doing I, I used I utilized the Toronto method where we did legs two days in a row, um, just to help try and bring up her you know her lower body work. Um, it worked. It worked. It worked. There was there was a lot of um, again it's it's one of those ones where you know, people underestimate time. Building muscle takes time. Um, and and this is a, 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 it's a, a off topic, but a bit point, you know, when people walk in like, oh, but will I look better if I do it in six months or if I do it in 12 weeks? Or if I look yeah, better, maybe I should just wait till next year. It's like, you'll always look better next year and then you'll look better the year after. In 10 years And time. then you'll look better in 10 years. Well, that's the thing though. That's right? what you're, training is. You're, 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 you're building a house, you're setting a foundation and then you're just going to keep adding to this house and over and over. And that, like... The mansion is always going to look better than the little shoebox down in Brighton. Absolutely. I mean, muscle building muscle is also a function of the autonomic nervous system as well in, in that the more you can rest and relax, the more you can get into that parasympathetic rest and digest to facilitate that growth, the more you can get into that sympathetic and really go and push. And also, the stronger you are, the more you're, the ability you have to recruit from the nervous system, the more muscular damage you can create during training. So... For example, if you can deadlift 200 kilos versus 100 kilos, while the person who can deadlift 200 kilos that is far closer to their neural potential uh, is going to get more muscle gains than the person who's just deadlifting. Obviously, within reason, they have to also then marry that strength work up with hypertrophy work. It's because there are obviously lifters who have to stay at a weight category and they stay at that weight category by continuing to do neural exclusive work. But if you took that person who has a very attuned nervous system and got them to do a perch free work, they're going to they're going to break down muscle much faster. So long as they can recover and build that muscle, they're going to get far better results. So it's where you need, I, I feel, to, to really maximize your hypertrophy potential. You know, if we looked at competing as a 12 month cycle at the start of that cycle, there should be some general preparatory work along with some general strength work building squats getting the nervous system capacity up to then go into a perch free work to then go into that real conditioning work where you're doing lots of supersets tri-sets drop setting whatever it may be to really break down muscle to build it back up and then isolation work as well but the core of it the core i mean the, the wider the base the higher the peak the core of everything of starting is strength yeah well i mean i got nothing to say that's pretty, and, pretty, and much, also that's pretty much back on <laughs> and, and also skill work i just want to say as well as skill right skill people don't talk about this as well but you know this is where like a lot of programs people put in a lot of exercises to be novel yes there can be an effect but if you cannot connect your nervous system to that movement or you're inefficient at performing that movement you're not going to break down as much muscle than a movement that you're efficient at performing or you can maximize on so it could be something as little as like a tricep push down versus like an overhead obviously one works, works long head and you know different heads of the, the uh, tricep but the point is if you can if you practice that movement over and over and over and over and get really good at that movement you're going to be able to break down more muscle than the muscle that, that than the exercise that you haven't done before for novelty for example you are going to get gains from doing novel exercises but there is something to be said for being uh, creating neural efficiency at exercises and doing more sets at those exercises to create more damage yeah absolutely like i've got so many girls that walk through the door and i give them for example it's the most common one like a lap pull down a row and they'll i'm like what do you feel in that They're like oh my arm my bicep or oh, my traps this that i'm like 
your lats and they're like huh what's that <laughs> and i'm like like they're doing these exercises and they don't actually know one what muscle they're working and two they actually can't feel it and so many people that have come through the doors and i'm like just do a, a simple movement and they just don't feel that muscle they don't feel it working they can't recruit those muscle fibers so that's where um like really breaking down movement seeing how people move and like where they're going wrong and trying to help build on that is going to it's going to make them look better as well if they can feel a muscle working chances are they're recruiting the muscle fibers to build that muscle strip it back strip teach it back. the skill then you can advance the exercise yeah. once Absolutely. you've learned the skill so that that lap pull down turns into a chin up well then you can do but then you can also do both you know, yeah. at the same time like you can do a chin up on one day and then you can do a like pull down on your other back day you know, no all one of a sudden you, you feel your lats and like yeah, oh, what's yeah. that muscle and you've got some back growth oh, wow. wow big backs <laughs> alright so let's, let's, do, let's do a brainstorm case study to really nail this home we get a competitor gets in, in the door let's say female competitor they're, they've got 12 months to compete they're 15 kilos away from their show weight what, what phase how are we starting their programming one, how do they move? Good answer. How do they move? How do and they move? How don't they move? How don't they move? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, pick out the weaknesses, pick out the strengths and work from there. So GPP, structural assessment. We look where they're, well, firstly, structural assessment, see where they're at. Can they reach depth on their squat? How they how do they function overhead squat test? The hip hinge. What, hip hinge, clack yeah. test, what the knee function is like, all of the above. Yeah. Let's say they, they, get, they get gold stars on everything. Where do we Amazing. take them? Amazing. Yeah, no, no, no. Usually <laughs> don't see that. No, I'm done. See you later. Yeah, yeah usually don't You're see that. You're on your own. Job done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think, I think then, depending on their training age, uh, actually, to be fair, I've got one at the moment. He's not a comp prep, but I've got a client like that at the moment. Walked in the door, did a squat, did a squat. Perfect. I was like, I'm like, wow. Who yeah. are you? Yeah. I don't know what to do because this is, you're like, <laughs> a, like a unicorn. Yeah. Um, I think you can then just move on to a bit more. Yeah, you, know, you can start them on like an advanced GPP. Um, and I think any sort of, any, for anybody, a general preparatory phase is going to be important. One, for not only for you as a coach, but also for you, for them as a client, to get used to you and your coaching and your programming um, and to learn, you know, might be well, you know, how you implement your tempo or pauses or quarters, um, things like that. So I think, you know, it's going to depend on how much time they have. How much time they have? Can you train four days? Can you train five days? Okay, you can train four days. Let's start with four. Just letting you know that, you know, you are going to, uh, you do want to compete. Look, I think, we will be leading into five days. Just um, so I'm going to get you, get you get you ready, get prepared. We're going to start with four. Once we've exhausted all that four days, let's go into five. There might be an upper two upper body days, two lower body days. Mm. And what I would do is, if they can do all the above, like start on one day, you'd have a squat day on lower body day. The other day would be let's say a trap bar deadlift, um, and then on same as uh, upper body day would like, get them benching, maybe dumbbells, still dumbbells. I still like dumbbells on. I still um, like bench. <laughs> I still like, you're so strong. Yeah, I still like I still like um, dumbbell benching on the first day, and then just working through all the angles. So whether it be from from overhead, you know, so seated shoulder press to 45, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, 15 degrees. Yeah. I think what it comes down to is that uh, someone walks in the door. Okay, how do they move? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? All right, we've done that, and moving on from there is like, okay, now what's what's their goal? They want to compete. Cool. What category do they want to do? Where are they at? Um, what's what's the muscle that we need to bring up okay cool now let's draw our attention to that i think competing is about how you look at the end of the day you jump on stage you were judged for how you look you like, were judged. You, you were paying people <laughs> to tell you what is wrong with you like what like oh, what kind of like, people are we? Like i that. hope i look person better than the person next to me yeah, yeah. absolutely that's what, it is. that's what it is but i think um, that's, it's like you said before you're going to have those you know those same movement patterns and those base movements that you're going to do you know it's going to be your squat your deadlift your bench you know you're pulling your, your, your vertical pulling movements you etc that are going to stay the same and you're going to progressive overload and then you're going to look at and go okay let's say somebody needs more quads okay how many let's we'll, we might do it two or three days a week and we'll go okay one squat day one hack squat day so what yeah. you're trying to say is that the instagram videos that we see we can't all just do them and look like a bikini bikini uh, competitor <laughs> Fuck. Why not? Hey, if it Why was not? that easy, I don't think we'd be sitting here doing this video. The thing, I wouldn't okay, have a job. Okay, Mark, you okay, wouldn't have a studio, okay. would you? So, so the thing with the Instagram videos is like what, what the, a lot of Instagrammers do is they do a whole bunch of content when they're in shape. 
save it on their reels, do a whole so bunch good. of photo shoots, and no. then for like two, three years, they're not in shape, and they just repost, 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 they're repost, shredded, repost. They're killing it. So, hey, dude, man, you don't even look like that now. Oh, and then you've just given away my secret on how I give out all my photo shoot photos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why don't, why don't you post like live training stuff? Like, what would you do? Like, what are you doing right now? Why I have an oversized t-shirt on right now. <laughs> why I have an oversized t-shirt? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what, one thing I was going to add to hypertrophy phases with strength, one thing that I do a lot of is the relative strength phase. I do like the five by five to begin someone who's got, you know, A pluses on all their structure and then adding with the five by five, a lot of pauses. So like say if they're squatting, there's always going to be a pause at the bottom to really hone in. Cause again, that we sucks. spoke before about, yeah, but, <laughs> but also from an hypertrophy. So it does two things, right? One is that it teaches people the skill but also two, from an hypertrophy perspective, it increases time under tension. So instead of that squat being, you know, like four seconds, it's now six seconds or, or eight seconds and people really hate it because the time under they tension do. is so long, but you need that tension in the muscle to really, to really obviously get it to- well not, well, not only that, but also, you know, having those pauses, let's say in a squat at the bottom range, it's gonna stop people from just bouncing out and losing that tension. Yeah. And that's what the pause, a lot of the pause is there for. It's like, and that's why, you know, and I'm very much similar where, at first, let's say everyone's you know, advanced, blah blah blah, and you, you know, I'll go anywhere between that five to eight rep range. I still do. T- I still do tempos. Yeah, I still yeah, do pauses. The, yeah, so yeah, for that relative strength. Still love relative strength. Um, and you know, you, you, you know, five reps with a bounce at the bottom is going to get a different stimulus to five reps with a pause under control. Yeah, you know, oh, with a controlled load. Love it. You know, that's that you're going to build different. Um, you're going to build different different. The dollars in the yeah. detail. Yeah, yeah correct, everything. correct. From the programming to the the way you execute to the way you perform the reps to how everything is structured to where like every training program where you start and where you end everything should be sequential when you look at it in reflective and you go this is where you started this is where you end everything should make sense your programming should always tell a story of you know if, if i was to look at someone's program like you show me amy's program I'm like oh this is where she started i oh, let me guess you had this 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 you'd be like you should be able to tell the story and then you improved and oh this is what you did next and let me guess the comp was here you should be able to read a program in a 12-month block and understand where the client journey or where someone was at that period and what they're trying to achieve which is then like if we look at amy's program at the moment we're on the off season trying to build up you know Certain areas. The most hated body part. Or the most hated body parts. <laughs> and, and we like, My quads. quads. <laughs> and we like, we, sp- we spent, and, and that's where, you know, I've, we've programmed for her now and we've gone, okay, we're going to spend, I've actually planned, I actually planned, it was 12 months of We've got a new hack squat, just I don't know if you know. If yeah, I hate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah she, like, she knows it, loves it. <laughs> I know it. Have you done knows super it set, well. uh, the front squat superset with uh, hack squat, hack squat superset with leg extension? Leg extension, no, no, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Leg extension or you got the tsunami? Oh, you just just name them all. I've got them. We've got them all. Yeah, whatever whatever there is, Amy's got them all. Great. Um, but like I've got Amy's, you know, I planned out, we, we finished comp and um, went through a bit of a recovery phase um, and then I planned out the next 12 months. I was like, okay, this is what we need to build on. This is your weaknesses. This is what we're going to hit. And it was, first still thing we did was... no chest. Still no chest. <laughs> still no chest. <laughs> still pressing. I'm not pants. sure if you've realised, but you... You don't get judged on your big pecs <laughs> when you get on stage. More shoulders. Um, so you, and proteins uh, rate li- limited. Well, well, yeah, and and that's right why synthesis. and that's where it's important. You're gonna yeah. pick out the weaknesses and how Amy moves, um, or how how your client moves, and go. Okay, this is what we need to hit, and this is how I'm gonna spend on it, and etc. 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 And like Amy's spending eight weeks on quads, and I think it's the first time we've hit quads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first time we've hit quads. We've already hit glutes and hams, um, and we spent a lot of time just just. And sitting just not, there and not just doing the same movement. Like not underestimating the basics too. Like I'm not doing anything fancy. Like I'm not standing on BOSU balls doing squat jumps and all sorts of random sit things. Why well, would you? Exactly. Like it's yeah. the basics. It's the basic movement patterns done repeatedly for a long period of time with progression. Hey, Amy. Volume and intensity. How many and times tension. a week do you have leg extensions? Too many. How many? How many? Three, three times a three. week. That's, that's, three. That's the correct answer. Yeah, yes. three. So, 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 basic, so basically, you at win. the moment, like Amy's hitting quads. Quad, we're sp- like quad specialization phase at the moment. And Amy's hitting leg extension three times a week. The first mm-hmm. may, day, maybe 10 reps with a band. I think it actually is. I think the first day is yeah, banded. Because 10 reps, 10 reps with a band. is just not, not enough. No. Well, it's no. very low. No, it's not enough. Right. And then the second day, have you got 20 reps? Yeah. And then the third day is 30 reps? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Don't let me forget it. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's, yeah. On that note, if you want to have some fun on the leg extension, <laughs> you should reach out to us. Uh, Tyrone, where can the folks learn more about you? You find me on Instagram, coach underscore Felino. So that's C-O-A-C-H underscore F-O-L-I-N-O. 
Um, and then you can also walk down the 3D1 Swan Street and I'll be here at Enterprise Fitness. <laughs> Drinking coffee. Drinking coffee and training people on the leg extension. Yeah. And you can find me at Instagram at Amy Dorrell. So A M Y D O R R E L L. You also find me here at Enterprise, and I will not be drinking coffee because I don't drink coffee. <laughs> and you'll find me here at Enterprise. My, what is it? Instagram. Instagram that's the one. Is uh, at Mark Atobri. That's O W T O B R E. Are you folks, the only one on TikTok as well? I'm on TikTok. Oh yeah, I'm all over TikTok. So make don't sure you check me out. TikTok. TikTok. But we're on YouTube here. So, oh, YouTube. so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube for more great videos just like this one hit that subscribe and ring that i'm waiting for tyrant to say it bell yeah thank you ding, you always ding, makes ding, fun ding. of me about this but make sure you ring that bell for all our notifications make sure you subscribe on youtube to get all of our updates hope you've had a fun time watching this oh and stay tuned to the part three we've got a part three about to come out so make sure you stay tuned to the part three in this one we're going to be talking all about body dysmorphia issues the healthy aspect of competing it's going to be an interesting conversation so until next time eat well train hard and supplement smart he said it. I thought he was going to forget. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I never forget. <laughs>